Hi everyone, so lately I've had a lot of requests for more makeup videos tailored towards beginners and that's what I'm bringing to you today. So this isn't a makeup tutorial, I'm going back to basics and showing you some tips and tricks to help you blend your eyeshadow like a pro. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is to apply a base. I like to use one with a bit of a tint because if like me, you've got visible veins on your lids or discoloration, this type of a base will even that out and give you a nice blank canvas to start out on. A base acts as a barrier between your skin and the shadows, so it will prevent the natural oils that your eyes produce from breaking down your shadows throughout the day. And there's lots of benefits to using a base. Your eyeshadows will go on more smoothly, they'll appear more vibrantly, and they'll last longer as well. But as for the application, you can use your fingers or a brush. Fingers are maybe a little better as the warmth of your fingers is going to help melt the product into the skin. The next thing you want to do is you want to set that base in place. So I like to take a little bit of my face powder on a fluffy blending brush and I just sweep this anywhere that I've applied the base. And this step is important for a variety of reasons. Um, the base is tacky to the touch, meaning if you've applied eyeshadow directly on top of the base, it would stick in certain places and give a patchy appearance to the shadows, which we definitely don't want. And if you didn't set the base, over time it would wear down and crease up, having a knock-on effect to the shadows. So just kind of look at it this way, if you're wearing a cream or liquid foundation, you would apply powder on top to keep it in place and make sure the foundation lasts all day. And it's the same concept here with the eyeshadow base. If you don't have an eyeshadow base, don't worry, you can just use a concealer or your foundation. But as I've stated, make sure to apply some powder over the top just to keep it from smudging and creasing up throughout the day. Before I get on to the application and blending of shadows, I want to talk you through a couple of things in relation to brushes. So the first being about blending brushes because there are various different types. As an example, here are three different ones and I'm going to talk you through how they work in different ways. So this is a tapered blending brush and as the name suggests, with this brush, the tip is tapered to a point so it makes it good for precision work. For instance, if I was creating a cut crease look and I wanted to apply shadow in the deepest part of my crease, this brush would apply the product with ease. However, it isn't the best for blending due to its shape. I find it's better more so for laying down colour in certain areas. This next type of blending brush is probably the most commonly used one. It isn't too dense, it isn't too fluffy, so it's perfect for applying and blending shadows in general. This particular one is my favourite because it's great for the transition colour, applying crease colours, blending edges, it does it all. This last brush is larger than the one shown previously. As you can see, it's fluffier again, there's a lot of movement to it. And I use this brush to set my base because it works great for applying a dusting of product to a large area quite quickly because of its size. And this brush is also great for blending around the edges of a look to make sure that the blending is seamless. So I find the more dense the brush, the more product it'll pick up, therefore the more product it'll apply. Whereas fluffier brushes will pick up less product, making them better for blending as opposed to applying shadow. The last thing I want to say on the topic of brushes before we start is to make sure you begin with clean brushes. Dirty brushes aren't going to blend product as well as clean ones will. And if your brush is dirty, the shadow that you are applying won't be true to colour because there's excess shadow on the brush from previous use. And along with that, the shadow buildup weighs down the bristles so the brush isn't going to perform as well as it could. Eyeshadow wise, the key to getting that really nice blend is to pick a variety of shadows that range from light to dark and then apply your shadows in that order and that's what's going to give you that really nice gradient effect and in turn make the application look really professional. So I begin by lightly dipping my brush into my eyeshadow of choice and as you can see the eyeshadow is just sitting on top of the bristles, that's what you want. You don't want to press and swirl your brush into the eyeshadow and have half the brush covered in product because you're not going to be able to work with that amount of eyeshadow on your brush. It'll just make blending a nightmare to do. So start by taking a small amount of eyeshadow on your brush at a time and build up the intensity. And if you've gone in a little heavy handed and you feel like you've got too much eyeshadow on your brush, just tap off the excess. 
In terms of technique, I like to use a mixture of circular motions and windshield wiper motions. I use the circular motions first to kind of lay the eyeshadow down and once I feel that all of the product has been distributed, I then use the windshield wiper motions to fade the colour upwards. I've applied my transition shade and now I'm going in with the darker brown and I'm applying it into the crease. I'm not pulling it up as high as that previous shade though because I want that nice gradient effect. The transition shade should appear like a halo over that brown, however I do want the two of them to fade together, so once I'm happy with how that brown looks, I'm going back in with my transition shade, placing it in between the light brown and the darker brown, and I'm blending back and forth to fuse the two shadows together. So the transition shade bridges the gap between the crease colour, which is that dark shade, and the colour on your brow bone, which is that light skin tone shade. So by having a lighter colour between those two shades helps them transition more smoothly into one another. So as you can see we've got that dark brown transitioning into the lighter brown and then that transitions into the colour under the brow. A good tip is to have a clean blending brush handy at all times and you can use this to lightly buff around the edges to make sure everything is nice and soft and blended. So let's say though that you do have a harsh edge and the blending brush alone isn't doing the job. Take a little bit of your face powder on the brush and lightly sweep it over the harsh edge to soften it. And this is a great way of blending out the eyeshadow without adding any more colour. Moving on to the lid now, so for the most part I keep my blending brushes for applying and blending product in the crease. You could use it to apply the shadow to the lid, but you're not going to get the same colour payoff that you get using a flat brush. So I'd recommend using a flat eyeshadow brush and this is really going to pack the product on the lid and give you a nice intense colour payoff. So I've just completed the look myself and that's pretty much it. So I hope you found it helpful and easy enough to follow. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.